In this video today, we're going to work through the proof for the trig functions that we haven't considered yet. So we're going to look at tan, cotan, secant, and cosecant. And we're going to use the two rules that we have demonstrated uh, to show what the derivative of those would be. The rules that we've covered so far are the derivative with respect to x of sine x, which was cosine x, and the derivative with respect to x or cosine x, which was negative sine of x. Those are the two derivatives we've shown so far. We used the delta process to prove this one. We used this to show that this one had to be true. And now we'll use two of these to show the rest. So we're going to start with y equals or f of x. You can choose, doesn't really matter. 10x. Just as an aside, I'm just doing all these with x. If you wanted to do them sine u and end up with cosine u du by dx, no more difficult. It just has the chain rule element added. But just for clarity of what you're watching and less writing on the screen, I'm going to do everything with x. It shouldn't be a stretch to replace the x with the u. In order to take the derivative then, all we have in terms of trig functions are sine and cosine, so we need to express tan with sine and cosine, and hopefully we know that tan is sine of x over cosine of x. So to take this derivative then, we have to use the quotient rule. So we start by taking the derivative of sine, which is cosine x, we'll do that in red, and we'll keep cosine from the bottom, and we'll leave that blue. And that's minus, we keep the top, so we'll leave that in blue. We take the derivative of the bottom, which is negative sine of x. So derivative of the top, keep the bottom, keep the top, derivative of the bottom. And that's all divided by the denominator, or the bottom, squared. Quick simplification, cosine cosine is cosine squared of x, minus minus is plus sine squared of x, hopefully that rings some bells for you, because that you should recognize, sine squared cosine plus cosine squared or cosine squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1, that's an identity we use all the time. The derivative then is 1 over cosine squared of x. Not the easiest way to remember it, so what is 1 over cosine squared? Well, that's secant squared of x. And there's a neat little proof using what we've proven already to show that given y equals tan x, then y prime, or the derivative of y, is secant squared. So that's the proof of the derivative of tan. Let's move now to secant, perhaps. And we'll start then with y equal secant x. Now we have three rules we can use, the sine, the cosine, or the tan. Well, if we rewrite secant, that is 1 over cosine of x. And another way to say that, which actually makes this derivative easier, is cosine of x, all in brackets, to the minus 1. Not to be confused with the inverse cosine function. These are not the same. That's a mistake I see all the time. These are not the same thing. This is the reciprocal, or 1 over the cosine function. This is the inverse cosine function, a completely different function. Okay, So don't make that mistake. These are not the same. This is cosine of x to the power of minus 1, or 1 over cosine x. We take the derivative then. Minus 1 comes down. Cosine of x stays the same. Goes to the minus 2. That's the outside part. The chain rule then says we take the derivative of the inside part. Derivative of cosine then is negative sine. And now it's just a matter of simplifying it to make it look like 
something that's easy to remember. Minus minus, disappear, makes it positive. So we have a sine, and we have two cosines in the denominator. I'm going to write it this way. We're going to write one with the sine. We're going to keep one by itself. Because this is typically how people remember this derivative. Sine over cosine is tan. One over cosine is secant. And so now we know that given y equals secant x, the derivative is tan x secant x. So here's your next rule. And you've already seen it. I'm sure you have it written down, or I hope you have it written down already. Y equals secant x, then the derivative y prime is equal to tan x secant x. The next function we'll consider is y equals the cosecant of x. And this proof looks exactly the same as our last, really except our substitution at the end look a little different and our identity we're using here is different. Cosecant of x is 1 over sine in this case. And just like we did the example before, we'll write that as sine of x to the power of minus 1. Take the derivative of that, minus 1 comes down, becomes minus 2. And we multiply that by the derivative of the sine function, which is cosine of x. Simplifying gives us negative. We have a cosine on top and two sines on the bottom. So again, we'll split them. And cosine over sine is cotan of x. 1 over sine is cosecant of x, and that gives us our next rule, that if y is cosecant, then y prime is negative cotan of x, cosecant of x. One left, and I think we can squeeze it over here. And that one is if y equals the cotan of x. Two ways to do this one. We can use sine and cosine, which we've done for the rest, because we have already proven the derivative of each of those. But now we also have the derivative of tan. And a nice quick way to do this is to do it exactly like the last two. And say, well, cotan is the reciprocal of tan, since we've proven what the derivative of tan is, we can say that this has to be, and I'll skip the little bit of the writing here, this is tan all to the minus 1. And that's coming from this same idea here. Cotan is a reciprocal of tan. The derivative then, minus 1 comes down, tan of x to the minus 2 times the derivative of tan, which is secant squared of x. We showed the first part of this video. And a little more use of identities here. But let's write it this way first. We'll say that's negative 1 over tan squared of x times secant squared of x. Now we'll change everything to sine and cosine and see what we get. So tan squared is sine squared over cosine squared, but it's the reciprocal of that because it's 1 over. So we actually put the cosine squared up top. So this is actually cosine squared of x, and there's that negative there, over sine squared. And secant is 1 over cosine squared. That tan part again, remember tan is sine over cosine. They're both squared. But because it's in the denominator, we flip it to get rid of the 1 over. So that's why we got this. Now, we get to cancel a bit. This cosine squared and this cosine squared go. 
you're left with minus 1 over sine squared, which is minus cosecant squared of x. We don't want to make this video any longer, so we're going to stop there. Our last rule then, or proof that we've shown, is that if we have y equal cotan x, then the derivative is y prime equal co minus cosecant squared of x. In the next video, you can find examples of each of these just to get yourself a little more familiar with using these rules.